Hello, hello. Happy Sunday. I'm going to be doing the third one of my, my virtual event series ones. This one is going to be a kind of a, a drippy, I wanted to make it kind of look like how the one came out yesterday here. That one is available. I did put the birds on it. Um, it's going to be the uh, drippy kind of a version in alcohol ink as the base. I'm going to let that dry. Um, I might build a to um, to do it all in one session, but I have a feeling this is going to be a um, one I'll be doing earlier in the morning and then posting up a little bit later. So this one will have um, kind of a painted version of a big wide tree on it. I want to do it with um, my little <laughs> kind of shards and little uh, pieces of powder from the pastel dust. And then I turn around with the paintbrush in the alcohol ink and I'm going to paint on it and use that as my, um, my painting medium. But I'm going to go ahead and try to do the base coat first. I don't think it'll dry good enough for me to be able to continue right on. I think it's going to have to be um, a two-part video that I'm going to have to put together. So I'm just going to kind of pick some colors. I'm working with um, fine, let's see, Fireworks, I guess. Oh, FW, I'm not sure what it stands for, sorry. But it's the um, alcohol ink. See it. And just different colors of it. I gotta find a stable point to put this down. I know one of my little droppers doesn't work. So we'll get some orange in there. Maybe it's my yellow that doesn't work. Yep. So I have to use a dropper. nearly enough out here anyway. See, kind of look. That went everywhere. A little clumpy. Not really stirring up very good in here. I don't use them enough. Probably could have tried it with some of my other newer acrylics I have over there. My unicorn spit of a funny name that I got for Christmas. Uh, keep these clean somehow. So if this part's too boring, you're not going to be seeing it because it's uh, it might end up taking me so long that maybe you'll just be seeing the part that will come in for the next session. But if you're seeing it now, then I must have been able to do it at somewhat decent speed. I like how my other one came out. It was just a really unique drippy parts to it. and just kind of gave this illusion of the, the background. And, too much of the darker color because I want it to be more vibrant. I really want to bring out the uh, kind of a rainbowy sky look, kind of how that one is on there with the really left with the green and everything. I'm going to run out of rockers. Didn't bring a whole bunch of them right next to me. And then I'm going to put it on with the paint brush and try to really streak it. I don't remember if I did something really unique with it the last time I made one, so unfortunately I would repeat it that way again, but I don't remember exactly what it is. We'll start with, well, this one's uh, not all gray, purple. Oh, there it is. The pretty skies always have the nice purples and the pinks. I don't know if I'll have nearly enough of my stuff for being able to paint this big of a surface. So I'm probably going to have to add more. I'm going to pick it up. Oh, I'm knocking it over because I don't want that all over this. That will be pretty permanent. Okay, so we're just going to vary it around. I'm just going to kind of let it streak. 
I want it to drip. I want my colors to kind of mix. Oh, the ink's not mixing really pretty. But I'm just going for a background that's covered right now. That's all. And I want it to be pretty abstract. Yeah, I like that it, it, it's able to drip. I'm going to go all the way. The sides aren't painted on this uh, canvas board. They are just plain wood, so it doesn't matter if I try to make any big effort to paint the sides. Somebody's going to have to, um, you know, I'll have to paint it either pure black to make it look good or, or they'll frame it. I'm not as happy with the bubbling in it. So I do hope that that um, pops a little bit. And I think I might have come along with some alcohol ink spray. And then that was another way I got some interesting textures. So I may have to try that, but I'll have to grab my alcohol ink. My pretty pink's getting covered up here with a lot of the, the darker colors. So I got to bring some of that back in. But it's definitely giving a unique background color like I wanted. I don't want it to be too predictable. And then of course the more you kind of drip is the more unique your your coloring is going to end up. So take advantage of the moisture in some of the other areas and add some more to it. One side always kind of ends up a little bit more, you know, kind of bubbled down here. So that's a little bit of a disadvantage unless you turn it the next time and then figure you're going to have your streaks going both ways. It just really depends on what way you want your painting to look. Getting a lot of, um, a lot of browns in my, my colors here. They're not ending up as pure because my brush is dirty. Let me get more pink in. Hopefully that's one of the ones that works. <laughs> Probably try to bring in some of this really bright green. I love this green. <laughs> it doesn't work here. Try not to tip it. What color are we on? Let's get some pink. I'm glad they're runny enough to kind of roll down the board. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this side light again. Let's see how the green mixes in. If I end up doing the green this direction, I'm probably going to have to flip the painting, and then that'll be my trees coming up which is fine, so I'll try not to make, put any green on the bottom. And that way it'll always appear then that it's the trees. You give a little bit more of that impression. So get some of the green off of there. So I can go this way with some colors too. It's definitely turning out very brown, so it might end up having to be another layer of lighter colors coming over on the top of it. So I can bring that out a little bit more. We can start getting our greens up here. Let it do what it wants to do. But if I get them too much and they're all the way down at the other end anyway, it's not going to look normal because it's 
they're going to be bigger than what a normal tree would be. But when you're doing an abstract one like this, you're not really going for anything that's going to be too real. It's, it's all implied. Like this one is just kind of going wild here. So I think we lost that effect. We'll just do it on both sides then. Okay. Okay. To get more purple in. Don't have any spots open anymore. They mixed a lot darker than what I was hoping. Probably my one. I should have kept the brown off of the palette and then might have done better. Sure, there's no spots of white. There's little edges off there. Near the pooling. I don't want to leave just funky brush strokes on the end there, but I don't want all those extra clumps. So definitely have to be in at least two videos. So I am going to have to come back a little bit later and finish it. Let this one dry. I may still turn it around because now that it's dried enough, I can kind of pick up here and stop those. And let the pink kind of go from the tops of the trees. That way it covers up those areas that are green on this side. I wish I had remembered all the techniques that I did on the other one. I think I came in with some alcohol spray, but I'm afraid to ruin it. I'll try that on another one when I'm not <laughs> trying to do it for a video in time. <laughs> my problem is my, my back trees here are actually going to get covered up when I do my first one because the trunk's going to come like right here and come across and you're not even going to see them. So they probably need to be a little bit more prominent. When it comes time to make the other one, I'll be a little bit disappointed. So we'll get a little bit more flow going here. Oh, it's not moving. I think I let it dry too much. Just a little bit of movement, not a lot. Decisions, decisions. It's way too brown. Paintings, I don't want to get on my, my thing here. Wow, well, this is not quite coming out like I was hoping. 
but that's kind of the way a lot of experimenting techniques is. Oh, crap, shoot. I guess where would the fun be if everything came out exactly like you planned? You'd never have happy accidents. Oh, now I just got an idea for me painting, actually. I think I'm going to try one at some point with two trees meeting in the center. The grass type stuff down here and down here. And then they'll both meet and intertwine in the center. <laughs> oh, that's going to have to be a blue tree. Yeah. Okay, if anyone's interested in that one and wants me to make it, let me know. Because that one probably needs to be big enough canvas to really get the true effect. Um, but that one could be amazing. I don't know if I'd have to do it on wood. If I really wanted to do a big enough one that just they all just intertwined and came together, maybe in a heart or something in the center or a, Kind of so I could flip it over and try to, I would never be able to duplicate it exactly, but um, it could definitely look like two trees. <laughs> Ooh, I know what I want to do. Um, okay, well, I think we're going to kind of let that do what it wants to. So I get too much on, it's never going to dry. It's, it's, it's just going to be a mess. Don't know how it's looking from your side. Um, I wish it was a little bit brighter, though. Um, I can't. Drip, well, I can drip the yellow with my with my dropper, but I can't drip the yellow with my. This won't work. But I can use this. it up in different areas here. This might have been what I did the other time too. I kind of got drips part way through it. This is at least lightening it up a little bit. Worse. All right. well, hopefully this one comes out and once it's all dried and everything about it um, this one will be available too so if anybody's watching and and really wants to get to the end product of this one and uh, connect with me so we can make it happen Maybe it's stuck a little before. Luckily, I have down a plastic mat. Ah, it needs more color. Just needs to be punched out a little bit. Maybe I'll make little scatterings of the. Um, maybe I'll put some little gold in. This one's going to move a lot, or if it's going to be very stiff because of the, um, see how, how much it moves. Oh, it moves okay. Let it kind of pick up some of the moist areas. all these colors I'm kind of afraid to put the blue in I was almost tempted to put some blue but I just think it'd be a little bit too much
All right, I'm just going to put some drips of the purple and then I'm going to stop or I'll kill it. Hopefully my purple dries, you know, lighter like over here and not too um, too dark. Kind of reminds me of my chaos series because it's so chaotic. Maybe that's another reason why I like doing those other ones is because they're just whatever comes out comes out. I don't have to think about it too much. I just make it. I kind of like that, not having to really plan. You just kind of have a basic plan, but other than that, it's how you feel. Try to tap these edges off here a little bit. So they're not quite so lumpy. Stripes there. Well, I'm sure some of you were like, no, stop! Probably about five minutes ago before it got a little bit wild. But we'll see how it looks once we get to um, flip it over and put the tree in there. I'll have to kind of judge once it dries if it's going to look bad with the streaks going that way. And being the tree upside down or whether I'm just going to have to leave it this way and have that be part of the green of the uh, branches, which that could be my, my, my branch area as well. We'll see how it looks. So I am going to stop this part of the video and then I'm going to come back. Um, I'll merge it together and then post it. And then that way we can see the um, whole production. So I'll be back. Hello. And this is actually part two of my um, presentation here. Uh, and I said it wrong. It wasn't um, alcohol ink. It was actually acrylic ink. So I'm going to kind of judge here. This is dry. And I'm not sure if I want to go this direction or whether I am going to turn it around and go this direction. So this way does kind of look like it's grass going up and maybe we'll just go ahead and stick with this way. So I'm going to put a little bit of my isopropyl alcohol. And I hope by the time this recording is done, it's you guys aren't hearing the same echo I'm hearing. And if you are, it'll end up being a voiceover. Okay. I do need to find a skinnier brush than that. That is going to be too thick. Let's see. We'll grab this one. And this one's actually a watercolor brush. I hope I don't ruin it by uh oh, call. I don't want to ruin that brush. I have a good supply of brushes, but I don't want to ruin it. Okay. Put it over here. If I'm desperate, I'll use it. Okay. So we can probably, well, we'll go with this brush. So, like with most of my paintings, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wing it. I don't want to get it too wet because I don't want it to drip too much. And I've got a bunch of dust down here, and I've got a lot of dust in my tray. So I just kind of dip it, get it around in there so I've got something to paint with. And I'm just going to go with it. And it's going to end up whatever color is primarily down here. Usually it ends up pretty dark by the time I'm getting down to this, the stuff that's been around a while. 
And I'm just gonna make a tree with some wide branches. Kind of get some roots showing at the bottom too. And I don't know if you could do it with water as well. I just, I, I haven't tried. But I like the alcohol ink the way it dries faster. Now remember this painting will be for sale. I'll make a, the roots kind of pop up a little bit here. Kind of disappear down. I'll try to give it some character. I don't know if anyone has tried this technique before. Let me know in the, in the comments if anyone has done anything like this. And maybe show me some pictures of what you've done. I like that it's just, you know, totally unique. And we're gonna get the same one again. That's always the benefit of some of the abstract pieces. It's, you're just totally winging it. Oops, it's taking off too much of the color, so I'm gonna let that dry. And so you forgot to tell me you guys did anything interesting on this weekend. I can't see the comments, of course, now because I have to record this at a different time. Just because it's something I have to put together. But you can tell me afterwards if you had a good weekend or not so far. If you were productive. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was totally productive, but it's been a good weekend so far. Any weekend is good, so they get to paint. Those are my favorite kind. Besides traveling, I do love to travel. I like to uh, go to different places and take a lot of pictures. Tons of reference photos that I use for my paintings. and Too many to even keep track of. I need to organize them better because it's just... I want to do something and I know I've got paintings of it, but it's just a matter of trying to find it. Which year was I there? Okay. I'm going to lose probably some of this design at the bottom, depending on how people frame this. So, kind of always an issue that when you're doing stuff right at the bottom of a piece, you don't know what they're going to use for framing and you can end up losing the whole point. So that's one something I do need to be a little more mindful about. But I've seen some cool frames where they do it right up to the edge. And that's kind of neat. I'd like to have my husband be a little bit better at doing some of the frames and then uh, make me some really unique ones. Especially if I want to start doing some paintings that are uh, uh, really unique shapes and designs. I remember when we're done, I'll, I'll try to turn the camera so you can see the one piece that I'm working on. And that one's actually intended to go in our in our bedroom up at the point of the, uh, the ceiling area. So I want to put that up there. You know, we can put do the bigger ones here. Get my big branches up. I did some of the ceiling on some of my resins that are set up for the pastel, so I was hoping to be able to try to um, coat it. I kind of dulled the, the painting a little bit. I had it whoop, where it was really bright originally, and then it, it's wrong. it turned it really dark. So if you've seen the one video of this original, I like how it sealed around the edges, but unfortunately it, it, it took away some of the brightness on the actual piece. So I gotta figure out what to do. I haven't had a chance to try it again. I wanna try to spray it with a fixative first and see if that'll help. And if it does, I will be really happy because I've got a lot of ideas of what to do. I want to do some paintings where they're on a completely unique canvas shape. 
where half of the excitement of the painting is not only the shape, but also the painting. Kind of like my swan series, where I have um, the butterfly swan and the, um, the one where it's the butterfly with the watercolor with the tree. So it's kind of along my lines. It just gives a whole new element to your painting. I saw there was an artist, I don't know her name, I don't remember. It was in the uh, Park West Gallery uh, auction site. And there was a artist who, she does um, things on um, canvases that are shaped up like um, puzzle pieces. And I thought that was very unique. So I'd want to do something different, I'm copy her idea, but we have done cut out shapes before. So that in itself is, is not so unique that it's copying. Stuff is crumbling here. And I know there's the Fibonacci sequence as far as how you're supposed to make sure your your tree limbs and how many branches off for each one, but I will say this is abstract, so I'm not um, going to concentrate too much on making sure it's exact. I just want to get some branches down and I didn't want to take super long on this video for you guys either. I know there's a lot of good videos out there that talk about the, the proper way to put the branches depending upon which side of the tree it's on whether it will face um, different hands of the block. And some green up there. I don't quite have as much control over this because you're working with something so clumpy. I might have to switch to my skinnier brush. March already, I can't believe it. The year is just whizzing along. First thing's gonna be April. Then we'll be thinking about Christmas presents again soon. Time just flies by. So make sure if anybody let me know you got any exciting plans coming up for vacations. Make me jealous where is everybody going this summer. I want to get away at least we have a we have a coupon for a local place. I want to take a few days off and always do that and then make sure I take my camera so we can go get some pictures of the beach. Last time we took a little vacation, it was a little local place, and I brought my uh, watercolor set. And we sat out on the patio, and I did a few little paintings. And then we also went down to um, Lake Kajuma, took a bunch of pictures, and I did watercolor painting there as well. And the pictures that we took of the tree became the Roots of Erosion series. And now with all the rain, it's probably back to normal and you probably can't even see those roots that we were looking at. But it did become um, two of my paintings. So you got Roots of Erosion, erosion 1 and then 2. And that's from Lake Ajuk, down in um, Santa Barbara area. I usually do a lot more branches, but I don't want to say I don't want this to go too super long. I'll probably switch over to my skinnier brush here pretty soon so that I can do more branches. It's kind of a funky looking tree. I'm more going for showing you guys the technique than exacting here. Oh, and I should have brought over the other picture. I could have shown it to you. I put the birds in it from um, 
Well, you're still part of it, I think. And the other one. But not all of it. I had to fix a part of it because we dropped the brush. And then had to go back and do some repair work. Was not where I wanted a bird to go. At least it was able to be fixed. I just wish I had taken a picture of it before I did that. So I was curious to see exactly what it looked like before. Oh, that looks funky. Let's see here. Make that branch a little bit thicker since we kind of go off it on there. All right, I'm going to switch. This is my little rigger type brush. This will be easier to get a lot of the fine lines that I need. As long as I don't get too, too wet in the wild here. Ah, go back in shape. I don't want to put that little arm thing up or you guys won't be able to see anything. to get some other projects done this weekend, start on some new paintings, get them organized a little bit. You guys have the chance to um, get any specials this weekend on commissions. I would love to uh, work with somebody too. Help them pick the perfect painting for themselves for a gift. It's always nice to give something very personalized. Even if it's like the, the this end of that series where you can take somebody's picture and I can mix it up completely and they will be able to figure out what it started as. Some of them don't look anything like it and then other ones you can kind of tell where it came from. You can get that printed on a lot of different things. If you've had a chance to look at the um, the prize items, I still haven't heard from the winner, so I don't know which one he's picking. But the ones that aren't picked are going to be available for sale. So if you do have something you were eyeing, um, let me know. And it might still be available. Or it is because it's a reproduction, we can still make it again too. But the other ones I do, you know, will have easier to ship out because I have them here. This brush is not being very cooperative. Can't seem to get it to stick on there very good. All right, we may just have to go to this one. It doesn't have a good enough point. Just end up being one that I keep for my pastel painting. Try not to make it look too thin because you can kind of see through it. And I don't I don't want that for the look. I want you to be able to see the the branch and not through the branch because branches aren't translucent. They are a solid object. Okay, this one's working better. That's good. Somewhat better. Probably won't be able to do as many branches as I want, or this is going to take forever for you guys. Or I may just end up, you know, speeding up a portion for you. That way you're not stuck watching so long. And I would ask an opinion if I should put birds in or not, but unfortunately I can't get the comments first. 
So we'll make that judgment call. Might have a couple up in the corner up here. It's kind of one of my things that I do all the time. This there's rarely a, a landscape painting. The lights clicking in and out. Um, that doesn't have birds in it. That's just one thing I do a lot of. I really enjoy putting those in. Kind of helps give a little bit of size dimension, you know, to what the painting is or what your subject matter is. And I won't really go too long on that camera because that one not only did have an alarm go off on me, but it's in low power. So it might go out. So we may just have to kind of go with the simple tree just to give you guys an idea of what it's like. And I think once before too, I kind of came through with a marker. I had a, um, I would stop this, but unfortunately it doesn't really let me stop it really well. I'm kind of afraid to stop it and ruin it and not be able to come back with the right look to it. But it's just a demo piece anyway. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit better what it looks like. Okay. I'm going to move the camera. It's going to go. So I'm going to show you it a little bit better. Sorry, I'm really horrible at this. Okay. So that's what it looks like now. I'm probably going to try to do some stuff with maybe like a... Um, an acrylic marker and I do have to plug this phone in anyway before it dies but before I do that I'm going to show you real quick this is the shape of the other painting that I was talking about this one has the you know the, the area for the top of the um, ceiling all right put you back over here I need it on the swinging arm. All right, so I'm gonna stop this demo if I end up totally killing the painting. Then um, you'll just kind of see it end at this point. But I'm gonna come back in with some of my um, like oil painting markers, acrylic type markers, and if I can get them to make it look right, then I'm gonna um, do that. And then I'll, um, after I plug it in, attach that section of the painting for it as well. Well, thank you. In case I could make it look like this, I'm not coming back with you. But otherwise, uh, I will see you in the next part. All right. So this is hopefully the third session here. Um, I brought out some different paint pens that I have. This one's an oil-based one. Um, not positive which one this one is, whether this is an oil based as well. But I've got just, I just grabbed two of them right now, just a light brown so I could it marked a little bit and then a darker black. Um, so I'm just going to kind of come along here and just try to give it a little bit of um, some lines to make it look like it's more of a tree. Just because the other one wasn't really dark enough, it wasn't picking it up. The other one was a different type of wood, and it seemed like it worked a lot better than it did on, on this type of a panel. It's a different panel than um, what I did my other one on. If I had a little more time, I'd do it a little bit differently. I could maybe bring in some browns instead of just the black, but I just wanted something different. Try to get some look like it's the all the ridges on the tree look 
come back in with the lighter color in a little bit just to kind of make the colors pop a little bit more. Never really tried this before, so it's something new. That's what's fun. Be different to try something. You mess it up, what's the worst thing? It's a panel, you know, a few bucks, a little bit of your time. But uh, to learn if it worked, priceless. You kind of learn by doing, you know, experimenting and seeing what does and what doesn't work. Sometimes what doesn't work is just as useful to know as what did work. Because you'll know not to do that again or bother trying it. Especially if you have a really nice piece you're doing for someone and you're like, oh, shoot, I think it might look good if I tried that. <laughs> if you've done it, it failed. It's like, nope. Come up with option number two. So, you know, it's different. Down here, I'm not super thrilled with it, but we'll, we'll see if we can improve on that when we add the lighter color. I figured this way I could actually get more smaller branches in as long as I don't put my hand in it. If I do that, I'll really mess it up. And normally I wouldn't do my trees just completely in black. I would use more, you know, lighter colors and things like that. But I usually use my little arm thing, but I think it would go right on top of the the actual painting, so I'm gonna have to kind of use my own arm as my little bracing point here. But I always drew trees when I was younger. I would just sit there for hours and just draw branch after branch and just spread it out completely, and they would just end up with just this massive amount of um, spindly branches. Never drew the the leaves. Didn't like to. I only liked to just keep branch after branch after branch after branch. And that was just kind of my favorite thing to draw. We didn't really have a lot of, you know, spindly trees around us, too. So I'm not really sure what drew me to that. It's not like we lived in the, you know, snow area that had a lot of barren trees. We just kind of had whatever was normal for winter in California, but not so much of a area with uh, no branches. Not quite like back east where you guys have really pretty trees. It's giving me a little more character at least. A little bit better than the other one. Could have come in with you know, acrylic paint and, and a brush. But where's the fun in that? I wanted to mix it up a little bit. It'll be nice and matured and squeak. I've got my shadows on the wrong side here on my tree trunk. Doing this is kind of, to me, a little bit resembling with my blue trees. If you've never seen any of those of mine, look them up in the um, guides in my uh, VIP group. And it has all the different ones. And my the one that I profiled on one of the last videos, my uh, large poison, um, poison apple tree. That one was uh, quite fun to do. Fairly large painting, probably I like here. <laughs> it's a big one. That one has a lot of big branches. The background came out a little bit darker maybe than I would have liked, 
but it did work in going up that direction because then it gives the impression of the trees in the background. So I was happy that that worked. Can't really have a branch go thick from thin. You gotta go thick to thin. The other way around. This branch is a little bit odd looking. Getting stuff all over my marker. Well, I'm not sure how many of you guys stuck around to watch the whole video. Or maybe you just kind of zinged through it on a double speed or single speed, one and a half speed. So it's uh, quite a bit long. I may do another version of it, just kind of sped up. And I don't know if you noticed, I changed out the painting too. As well, there you go. That's one of the ones that's in the um, the free uh, or the contest one, I should say. So that was one that's available. That was one of my my digital abstracts. And that was one that was just completely made up. So it wasn't from a photograph that I started with. I think I made that one when I was sitting in the waiting room at the optometrist office. It took a long time, so I did a whole bunch of different paintings. <laughs> Brought my iPad with me and did a bunch of paintings, and that one seems very familiar that that's the one. Should have named it something with eyes. I'm almost done. One thing about trees, they can be a little bit tedious because they have a lot of branches. Sometimes they'll start one and they'll be like, why did I pick a tree? Do you know how long it takes you to do it? It's kind of nice being able to use the, uh, the markers. Not quite the same as painting the tree, but it does allow you to work similar to it. You don't get quite the point um, that you would with, with some of the brushes. I'm um, trying not to make it look too similar. Um, one side to have a little bit more branches than the other side. If I had a finer tip, it would be better, but I don't really have a fine one. So I'm just kind of trying to barely touch the edge. So I can get these really wispy ones. Try to get in a little bit of um, some light colors here, just to show some difference. It's more than anything; it's pulling off the color. <laughs> I guess in some way it's, it still works. It just kind of gives it a different color. I 
Pork tips all dirty now. I'm going to get quite the effect I wanted with this one. So I think we'll put some birds in the corner. Call this one done. So let's put some birds up here. They always say do them in odd numbers. So I usually do either three or five. That's my typical number. So I can sign it without totally messing it up down here too. And there you have it. Really out there, so you can see a little bit better. And luckily, we took a break when we did because the light on my left hand side over here decided it wanted to crash all the way down. So that was interesting. Didn't even touch it. And I guess we'll probably this is kind of like a, a rainbow tree, so that's probably what I will call it maybe a drippy rainbow tree or rainbow drips, maybe. That might even be kind of cool. That's the um the lesson for Sunday. Sorry it went so long. Thank you all for joining me and please I hope you find some paintings that you would like more information about or would like to purchase. Um, I would be happy to discuss them with you or any um, future paintings for your home. Um, as you can tell I love to make art so we can work on something completely unique or you can look through my catalog and there's a lot more paintings that aren't in all the catalogs too. So if there's a certain type of painting, whether it be watercolors or pastels or a certain subject matter and you just don't see it, um, I might have it. It's just probably haven't had a chance to um, get them all uploaded. So thank you again uh, for attending. My name is Kimberly LeClaire with Kimberly LeClaire Art. And I will see you um, probably next Saturday at 10. That's been kind of my time slot. So thank you very much.